The MMA Discussion Podcast brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Use the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off all the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by our sponsor, MMAProfit.com. Play Fantasy MMA for free for the chance to win $100. Visit the link below for more information. We're now available also on the radio podcast app Stitcher, which is available to download on any smartphone. Also available now on iTunes. Please subscribe. Give us a listen if you ever need to hear us on the go. And Chris, you have something to say. Go ahead. Yeah, I do. Um, I want to give a big shout out to the Flex Belt. They sent me a free product to try out, a free belt. And, and I'm going to have a review up sometime in the next few weeks. I've been using it for about a week. And you just you'll hear my opinion on that in a few weeks' time. All right. Fans, it's the end of the year. Last Saturday was the final event, December 20th, UFC Fight Night 58, Machida versus uh, CB Dalloway. A crazy good event. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great event. Um, but we're not going to talk about that today. That will be on the next podcast. This is the MMA Discussion Award Show where we will be giving out our awards for – MMA all of in 2014. It's been a crazy year with a lot of stories going down, a lot more fights to watch and choose from as far as awards go. It's been an odd year, but here we are, me and Chris Powell, Yuka, giving the awards out today. It's gonna be fun, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, fans, um, I tried talking to you as well to get which uh, awards we'd be giving out. We have them all out. We're gonna start with the first one. There's a lot. There is a lot. We have a lot. Let me just lit and them all now. Uh, we have Prospect of the Year, MMA Most Improved of the Year, Upset of the Year, Coach of the Year, Gym of the Year, Story of the Year, Moment of the Year, of course, Knockout Submission and Fight of the Year, as well as Fighter and Women's Fighter of the Year. Um, all of those, me and Chris, we're about to break it down right now. Chris, we'll start off with probably the easiest one. Let's go – well, not the easiest one. Let's go with MMA Gem of the Year. Now, for me, this was a tough one, actually. I had to go with American Top Team. They have a crazy good camp. Uh, they've always had it. They've always been – I uh, Yeah, I mean, they've, they've always had some, some of the best uh, uh, fighters fighting for them uh, generally uh, throughout all of their history. Um, they're they're known as one of the best gyms out there in the world, um, and this year they, they they had a lot of success with a lot of fighters. None more so than, of course, their their new champ, the new champion of the UFC at the welterweight division, Robbie Lawler. Um, I had to go with the American Top Team. They seem to to have really gotten their their game together, I and mean, uh, the return of some fighters too, Tiago Alves. Um, and Claudia Gandela, who kind of was a breakout fighter this year, didn't win her last fight, but um, they, they just seem to be the team to pick. As far as a lot of tough choices, like Alpha Male could have been one, especially if Chad Mendes would have won. I think that would have made it an easy pick for me specifically. But um, they also had Will Brooks came out, had a crazy year, a great year. He's probably going to – he's probably up there for some of our um, – our awards today, Jessica Aguilar, another fighter that had a great year. Um, Douglas Lima, one of the uh, Doug, both of the Lima brothers train here. Melvin Gallard, if his fight would have, if he could, he could have gotten it up together. Mark Hunt fought for the interim heavyweight belt this year. Uh, Bobby Lashley, who's doing some things at heavyweight and, and, and Bellator. King Mo also doing some big things in the UFC. Did lose his first fight of the year, I believe, against Quentin Rampage. Other than that, he's won them all. They, they've had a great year. Plus, as well, they also house Ben Saunders, who could be up for submission of the year. We'll talk about that later. i got to go with American Top Team. It's They've had a great year. They have a lot of fighters under their house. Um, there's even more to choose from, uh, like Jorge Masvidal, Dustin Poirier. There's been a lot of great uh, fighters from some uh, uh, from this camp. And so i got to go with American Top Team, gym of the year. Chris Pauluka, who is your gym of the year? Let's debate it. Uh, I, uh, we're not going to have much debating to do because I also want what American top team is. <laughs> so basically, I'm just going to reiterate your points. Robbie Lawler became their first champion. They've always been a gym with a lot of talent, as you name countless fighters that train there. But a lot of guys have really shown up this year. Hector Lombard trains over there. Tyron Woodley, these guys are coming up in the division. 
they're and they're right at the cusp of the title shot. They're not too far away. And we have, as you said, all the other fighters there doing great things. And especially that Robbie with Lawler win. That title win really secured this for me. And, I mean, there's been a lot of other guys. There's a lot of other gyms that were close. But the title win, the change in the guard there, along with all the other fighters they have in the staple, really secured TT as the team of the year for 2014 for me. Yeah. I also just found out they have Yoel Romero in their gym, which I wasn't yeah, aware of just now. Um, that's they good. have a that's... bunch. They have stacked Walter Waits and – Middleweight's over at that gym. They have everything. They do, man. Oh, man. It's a great gym. American Top Team, MMA discussion, gym of the year. Pretty easy, it seems. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Great award. You want to go to coach? That yep. seems like the I got most... the list down. Let's do it. Coach of the year. Chris, why don't you go first? We'll take All turns. Right, you so... go first, and then I'll go first. And... All right. Yeah, no problem. Um, This one was a little bit harder for me because there weren't really – too many like ridiculous standout coaches this year in my opinion like last year Dwayne Ludwig was an easy easy choice just because of how he transformed team alpha male this year I went with a pick that I've seen a lot of people going with and it just it makes sense I went with uh, Rafael Cordero at, of Kings MMA he's really helped guys like Fabricio where Doom just took the interim uh, heavyweight title and he trains over under Rafael Cordero and as well as um, Rafael Dos Anjos is possibly getting the next shot at the lightweight title at Anthony Pettis. And um, Rafael Cordero has been very, very good at taking these guys who are very good grapplers and turning them into strikers. We saw that Dos Anjos outstrike Nick Diaz. We saw him look good against Cowboy Cerrone. We have Werdum been putting on a clinic striking. He knocked out Mark Hunt even though he wasn't looking so great in that first round. He outstruck Travis Brown. I mean, Cordero's doing a really great job over there. There weren't really too many standouts, but I thought he was the best of all to pick for this year's 2014 Coach of the Year. Got to agree. I mean, um, here <laughs> we agree again. I got to go with Rafael okay. Cordero. Um, you kind of took it all, uh, but I guess the more to, to, to iterate is also, yeah, he uh, he was never, I mean, think about last year or the year before. I mean, I don't think this is a guy that we were thinking about. He was uh, training in Brazil. He was training mostly in Brazil at like a shooto box gym. And then came here and started training, uh, started becoming a teacher at King's MMA. Trains guys like Yoto Machida as well. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he's gotten guys like Fabricio Verdum, and he's amped up that dude's game, man. Uh, I think that, you know, he's got a guy on the cusp of the heavyweight title, uh, the actual one, the undisputed, the lightweight title. You took it all out of my mouth. Rafael Codero, the, uh, the unanimous yeah. uh, winner of Coach of the Year for MMA Discussion. Yeah. I don't. I don't think this is gonna be as fun if we keep agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I mean, it's like so you were telling me some of these aren't as obvious. I'm sure we'll get to those at some point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there really were a lot of. It was, this year was really different, even though there were so many fights. I felt like last year was really easy for me to make a lot of these picks. This year, it's a lot tougher, in my opinion. I actually disagree. I thought last year it was tougher for some, like as far as fighter of the year. There was a lot of guys that could have deserved it, like Uriah Faber. Oh, yeah. I mean, and stuff. there was that, but then this year, fighter of the year, I mean, it was a little bit there. I mean, this year, that one might have been a bit easier, but there were a few other ones, like, as I was saying, coach of the year, gym of the year was close. Like, there weren't really too many standouts to me as much as there were last year. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to the next one. This might also be easy, <laughs> so let's just get it out of the way. M MMA discussion, upset of the year. Oh, this is another one we're going to agree on. Cause I, I, oh, I, you I, don't even I, know what I was going to say, or have I, I told know, you? I, don't I, I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you just knew. You just knew. All right. Yes, I think you do know. TJ Dillashaw with his 8-1 to one underdog upset exactly. over, over exactly. Hedden Barrow at UFC 173. Come on, don't bullshit yourself, fight fans. You knew. You knew. If you if anybody was watching UFC 173, they knew when they were watching this fight. Oh, TJ Dillashaw. Oh yeah, he'll win. Ah, yes. No. None of you thought that. I didn't even think that. And I'm a huge TJ Dillashaw fan. Since he came out of the house, I've been a big fan. I said, look, I'll be rooting for him, but I don't know. I don't think he'll get the win. I said it. I said, I'll admit it right now. That's exactly what I said. I was rooting for him. And sure enough, man, for five straight rounds, he just put the put the curb stomp on Hen and Burrell. I mean, it was it wasn't even competitive, you know, and it, it was it was one of the best. It was it was what I would say. I agree with Joe Rogan when he said it. I was thinking the same thing. That has got to be one of the most 
impressive, most masterful performances from an MMA fighter in a championship fight that I think I've ever seen. Um, and man, yeah, he was an eight to one underdog. I mean, I think the, I mean as far as odds go, that's a huge upset. I mean, the, the I mean the upset that odds wise was was on the same level was Chris Weidman with Anderson Silva last year in in recent memory. And other than that, another upset since then that has that has had that same magnitude was probably uh, Matt Serra versus George St. Pierre, which I still think odds wise is the biggest upset of, uh, of MMA of all time, possibly. Um, but yes, I got to go with it. TJ Dillashaw versus Hannon Burrell for the UFC Bantamweight Championship. And, you know, I wanted to see the rematch. It sucks that it didn't happen this year for uh, unfortunate reasons from Burrell and, and all that stuff. Hopefully we'll see it. But, man, he's going into this year and possibly looking at a fight with Dominic Cruz, and, man, that's going to be a crazy fight. Chris, go ahead and lay your obvious choice out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you have one of the greatest upsets of all time in UFC title history, it's pretty obvious. So, obviously, I went with uh, Dillis Joe Burrell as the upset of the year. For everything you said, again, we agree, but... It's this is I mean this is blatantly obvious. Dillashaw was one of the biggest underdogs in in title history. I maybe just this might have been the second biggest upset in UFC title history. It even argued that it could be the biggest because of the streak bro was on and everything. That um yeah I mean it this is just an easy one for me as all the points you made are obviously correct and I agree. Yeah I mean I mean you just gotta think about it too is um. Oh, what is it? Um, the, TJ going into the fight, I can't think of. I mean, even on eight, eight to one, I I feel for as badly as everybody was not giving TJ a chance, even myself. Uh, for eight to one, that's even that's even kind of fair. That's even like a little generous by odds makers. I mean, maybe they saw something we didn't. And I mean, TJ's had a hell of a year, uh, three and zero oh this year. I mean, um, obviously the Hennon Burrell win is the the biggest one. <clears throat> But man, yeah, I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see uh, seeing how how he how he moves forward uh, with that. Definitely, uh, looking at every bantamweight fight under the WEC and and UFC, it's the biggest upset in in, in the division from 155 and lower. I would say. So yeah, with I mean, that, it's, it's probably the second biggest upset of all time when you really think about it. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta. It has to be. The, it's the obvious choice here. Yeah, for UFC belts, man. Uh, top three: GSP, Sarah, Anderson, Silva, Weidman, and this one. I mean, those are the top three. And I can't think of one yeah. that was more dominant than this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I mean, those first, two, those other two, Weidman and Sarah, those were knockouts. You know what I mean? This one was a stamp. This was a. And, and know, he finished it with a knockout. That's the thing. He went. And he finished rounds, it with a knockout. Yeah, I mean he. For a second round. You know he put the he bully beat down on him. And then put the beating on. Yeah, him. exactly. Uh, it was just one of those performances, and I'm sure it's going to be brought up later on in in this podcast because uh, it, it could it, it might get more uh, awards later on. So with that unanimous decision again, comeback of the year MMA discussion comeback of the year, TJ Dillashaw of Hannah Burrell. It's unanimous. We're going to move on. That's three down. we got a lot more to go, though. So we're going to go with MMA discussion, comeback of the year. Now, this can be a fight or it can be a career. It, goes on, it, uh, it falls under uh, either one. So, Chris, you go first. All right. Everyone knows I have a little bit of an MMA crush on Dominic Cruz. So That's pretty good. Obviously, gay. he's going to win comeback <laughs> of the year. Dominic Cruz, he only fought once in his comeback. But, man, you got to feel for the guy. He was out for almost three years. And he was the champion of the UFC's bantamweight division. And he had to take a seat on the bench for three years. That's just a ridiculous amount of time. He tore his ACL twice. He tore his groin. And no one even oh. was sure if this guy was going to come back. Everyone was like just waiting for him to get hurt again and even possibly retire. Yeah. And you got to just feel for that guy. And the way he came back and just – the way he came back makes it even better because he just – you, we've never seen a Dominic Cruz look better than he did against Takeo Mizugaki. He just swarmed him. He didn't even—I don't even think he got touched. The guy just went in there, beat up Mizugaki, and finished him by by knockout in just over a minute. I mean, that's impressive, especially from a guy who was that injured for that long. And he wasn't a finisher. He was, everyone used to mock him for going to decision so much, but. He came to play when he went against Mizugaki, and that was just that was one of the best moments in general for 2014 for me. So it wins my comeback of the year. Oh, stop agreeing with me. 
Oh, you did it again? <laughs> no. I had to. I mean, what I mean, I had to. It, it was just. I mean, I'm not as big a Cruz fan. I'm not even a fan of him really at all. But I can't deny the man. I mean, when you go three years and you're being told each and every time you're getting pushed out of a fight. I mean, how many fights was he pushed out of? I mean, one, two, immediately off the favor because it was it was Faber, two favor fights. The Barrow fight. That's three fights I can think of. Yeah, I think that's it. But uh, but over the course of three years, just oh, yeah. so oh. bad. So much has happened since he was last in the sport, you know. And um, and but yeah, he came back with a freaking vengeance. One of the best uh, one of the best analogies I heard was he comes into the cage and it was like he was in a Super Mario game where he got the star and just went ape shit and just you know <laughs> beat the hell out of him. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> where he got the star started shining and boom was over it was, it was that it was easily one of the better performances of the year as well as far as our our awards go i gotta say that it, it could it could definitely be a moment as well but for us mma discussion comeback of the year goes to dominic cruz in in a, an amazing fashion beating the number five ranked guy in the world and just making him look silly you know, and, and, I, mean, I mean, the only ever guy that's ever made Mizugaki look that bad. And let's also remember, Mizugaki is on a five-fight win streak um, and looking at a title shot. You know, had he beaten Cruz, I'm sure that's probably what he'd be next in line. You know, this was essentially a number one contender's fight, uh, it, it, depending on how it went out. And sure enough, Cruz went in there, dominated. He's looking at the next title shot going into 2015. Another fight that, man, can't wait for in the next year. With that, yes, comeback of the year, Dominic Cruz. Let's move on to the next one. Hopefully we disagree. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we keep agreeing this much. I mean, it's not much of a podcast. No, we're only 20 minutes in. This is bullshit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. MMA discussion prospect of the year now. Who's first? Now, you or me? I forget who's next. I think you went first. I, I I'll let next. you go first. All right, I'll go next. Um, MMA prospect of the year now. For me, this is tough. Um, because it seems almost like it's an obvious choice, but at the same time, there are el other eligible contenders. Like, you know, honorable mentions for me are, are, are Max Holloway because he's now starting to find his groove. He's really looking like the guy that can shake up the featherweight division next year. Uh, another honorable mention is, uh, uh, I actually, to me personally, I think, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, wow, great. I can't even remember his name right now. I'll remember it later, but obviously he's not the winner. <laughs> but my MMA prospect of the year, even though uh, it's blatantly obvious to me, I got to go with it. The winner of the Ultimate Fighter season 17. Yeah, 17. Uh, Kelvin Gastelum, KG, came in this year, looked on fire, and recent, most recently defeated, got his first top 10 win. And with that, is looking at uh, is looking at a huge year next year. First of all, he's gonna fight Tyron Woodley next year uh, in a fight that could easily catapult him into contendership, if depending on how the fight goes. Uh, for me, Kelvin Gastelum has, has is looking like one of the more impressive guys coming out of the Ultimate Fighter house. Some guys, you know, I mean, with as many fighters that come through. Uh, I know people complain about the show. Maybe there's like too many fighters that get added on to from the show sometimes, uh, but. As for as far as for a winner is concerned, he has looked tremendous. He's five and zero in the UFC, uh, three finishes I believe, um, and uh, finishing uh, Jake Ellenberger in his last fight, which is an impressive win, no matter how you slice it. He's going into the next year taking on a top five opponent now, and man, depending on how that goes, it, it, he could definitely uh, shake things up. So with that, for the year that he's had, prospect of the year for me, Kelvin Gastelum, Chris. Tell me you disagree. Um, <laughs> we did it again. <laughs> yeah, I also went with Kelvin Gastel. I mean, uh, for me, Miles Jury was a close. Miles Jury, that's second. what his name was. There you go. Yes. Yeah, Miles Jury was a close second for me. I mean, he beat Diego Sanchez handily, and then he TKO Takanori Gomi in just over a yes. minute. And those were his two fights on the year, but I had to give it to Kelvin Gastelum slightly just because of the magnitude and the way he defeated Jake Ellenberger in his most recent fight. That was huge. And he also had two other wins, one over Rick Story, who beat Johnny Hendricks in the past, a former UFC welterweight champion. And Rick Story's looked really good, and Gastelum got a win over him. And he also got a unanimous decision over Nicholas Rusoki. And as you said, he's fighting Tyron Woodley next. 
And this guy, I mean, I'm not sure if we can consider him a prospect anymore because he's seventh in the division. But if you consider a prospect for like a future title contender, and he's only had what is it, ten fights in his professional career. Yeah, he's ten and zero. He's so, undefeated still. Yeah, so I mean, you can tag the. I mean, he's. Well, prospects should be labeled somebody that can shake up the the division, enter the top ten, possibly. So, like that's kind of how I'm measuring it. That's not the official yeah, description I mean, of it. Like but. you could think of a prospect. Some people would think of more like a guy in like possibly make, making their way into the UFC and shaking up things in the UFC. But yeah. as for I, I, yeah, I have to go with Gaslam as well. It makes sense to me to putting him there instead of Miles Jury, even though it was pretty close. Definitely. It's also, um, I think another guy that could go in there is Neil Magny. He's taking on a... Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, first of all, the guy had an insane year. I mean... 5-0? Uh, 5-0 oh. oh with like three fin- three or four finishes, something crazy like that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's insane to go on a run like that. Uh, and, and he doesn't. And he just sounds like he doesn't want to stop soon. And he's asking for more competition as of late. And so it'll be interesting to see how that goes moving forward into the next year. But, yes, Kelvin Gastelum, MMA Discussion Prospect of the Year. The award is unanimous. Once again, <laughs> let's move on. It's like five in a row now. Come on, man. Is we got to make sure this next one something we'll disagree on. All right. I think we will, actually, because there's a lot. There's too much to choose from that it could be the same one. So we're going to go with MMA Discussion Event of the Year. Oh, your turn, dude. <laughs> you go first. All right. So for my Event of the Year – I went with UFC Fight Night, Bisping versus Rockhold. I went with this event for, for a few reasons, but the main reason is that there were all finishes on this card. It was just a fun card. It had a top fight between two contenders in Bisping and Rockhold. And there was also um, Ally Akinta finished Ross Pearson, the underdog. We had um, a good fight between Robert Whitaker and Clint Hester. It was a really good fight. We had so many knockout submissions on this card. It was just really fun. It was quick. Yeah, I mean, the fights, I heard someone say the fights lasted a total time of like something over an hour, not much over an, an hour. An hour and six minutes. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah, I mean, that's so rare in the UFC nowadays, which sometimes it's, it, it might be a little too quick for most people, especially since it was the fight pass card and there's no really commercials or anything. They're just going straight through it. Yeah. But I mean, when this, that rarely happens, a card that all all fights end and finish. And it's not like these were a lot of low-level fights. They were on this card. And there was some back-and-forth fights. And um, yeah, that's why I went with it for... No, nothing else really stuck out to me insanely. I had UFC 178 just behind it. Just because I didn't think it was, I, I mean, it wasn't as fun of a card in my opinion. It was a really good card, but I, yeah, I'm gonna go UFC Fight Night Bisping vs. Rockhold. All right, finally we disagree. <laughs> yes, your turn. I want to hear. What I will say this: that it was on my, it's an, it was on my honorable mentions list. It's up there for sure. I'm sure so many people close. can pick it. Yeah, has to be. Um, when you're watching it, it's insane. I believe there's a sweet chin music knockout in that event as well. <laughs> I believe For any right. WWE fans, know what we're talking about. I forget who did it, but I believe you're right. <laughs> I'll look it up. I'll find out. But for me, my it, mine was also a, a fight night card, um, which is unfortunate. It's because you got to think about, like, wow. man, with the, I mean, uh, 178 was up there. Honestly, for me as well, though. I'm really um, curious. I'm curious to hear which event you pick. Oh, okay. Well, Yes, here we go. <laughs> uh, but as I was saying, I'll, I'll get to the honorable mentions. Let's just say it. Mine was uh, UFC Fight Night 45. Now, I know that doesn't really necessarily point it out, which one it is. So I will say the main event, UFC Fight Night 45, Donald Cerrone versus Jim Miller. Now, this event uh, actually had a six-fight uh, six main card. All of them ended in finishes. <laughs> Only two decisions across the entire card, and the one of the decisions was Claudia Gadella's debut into the UFC, and it was an impressive performance. She just absolutely dominated uh, uh, the, uh, her fight coming in, uh, looked, un- looked impressive. She was exciting because she went for submissions throughout the entire fight. Uh, the other decision was Gleason Tebow's dominant victory over Pat Healy. Other than that... Leslie Smith knocking out Jessamine Duke, Aljamain Sterling getting the uh, TKO over uh, Hugo Vienna. Uh, there was a lightweight fight where Yos Denis uh, Sidano uh, made his debut and 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 uh, 
won a won a TKO victory, and then the main card was insane. First of all, you had Edson Barboza liver kicking the hell out of Adam Dunham and then putting him down, and on in about three minutes, I believe. Rick Story got his first ever submission victory in the octagon. Joe Proctor got a knockout. John Lineker got a knockout. Lucas Martins got a knockout. And then sure enough, I don't know if anybody can forget, Donald Cerrone's head kick knockout over Jim Miller was insane. The entire card was high octane the entire way because each and every fight got better and better and better as far as finishes were, were concerned. Um, and it just kept the, kept the excitement up the entire time for me. And yeah, I mean, it had its commercials and stuff, but the fights were going by so well that it, 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 it did really... Yeah. It was so exciting still because you were just on the edge of your feet with each fight because it just kept building and building and building. And I remember watching it and going, man, this card just can't get, get any better. But then you're thinking like, holy shit, Cerrone versus Miller is the main event. Oh, my God. was insane. That was a fun card. It was a, was a really fun, fun card. card. My watch. favorite that card. Event was awesome. I remember watching that and thinking, thus far, that's my event of the year. And nothing's really topped the feeling I've had since watching that fight, uh, fight card yeah, since. That's a good pick. I like that pick. Yeah, and honorable mentions, of course, as we had, we both had UFC 178. I personally also had um, UFC uh, 175 in there, and it was unfortunate because the main card wasn't filled because of the the, 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 the falling out of Stefan Struve and Struve, Mitchell. Mitchell, right? But yeah, all the fights on there were, 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 were great, in my opinion. Ron, yeah, for, yeah, Chris Weidman, Leona Machida is possible fight of the year candidate. Ronda Rousey's knockout of Alexis Smith. Yeah, uh, um, I forget the rest of the main card right now. It's skipping me. Uh, I'll remember it soon. But I, I remember thinking that that was one of my favorite events of the year. Um, and for me... Yeah, UFC Fight Night 45, if you need to remember, Cerrone versus Miller. One of the best fight cards of the year. And I've, I I had one more point I needed to make. I couldn't remember what it was. But for as many events as there were, I just remembered. Yeah, I just remembered. For as many event, events as there were, um, <laughs> this made it uh, awfully hard to pick because of that. But at the same time, you never forget a, a certain card, uh, the way it makes you feel when you're watching it as it's going by, flying through you. Um, and, and the way that that card was, it was insane. I know certain other people have favorites because they were there maybe, but from where I was sitting, that fight card couldn't have been any more entertaining. Um, so with that, we'll move on. Uh, who do you, what do you think should win between our two then? UFC 45 or I mean, UFC no Ozzy? winner, just it's opinions. It's opinions. There's no, there can't be a winner when you talk we'll awards. You. Everyone All has right. their own separate. For my opinions. UFC event winner, UFC Fight Night 45. Yours, UFC Fight Night. Let's call it Ozzy because I can't remember the exact number right now. Rockhold versus Bisping. Great event. Uh, another good pick. Uh, it had 11 fights, I believe. Your, your Australian card? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I'm not sure, but let's move on. What's next? All right. Let's do it. Let's actually get into the unique ones of the year. Yeah, MMA discussion, fighter of the year. Let's do it. Let's just get right into that one. Oh, we're going straight to fighter? Yes, straight to fighter. All right. So this one, it depended on how a certain fight went for me. I'll say who I have before I announce my fighter of the year. I'll say who I have in my honorable mentions. Oh. My two top honorable mentions for this year were with Donald Cowboy Cerrone and Luke Rockhold. Rockhold went to <laughs> Good pick. Mm -hmm. Cowboy went 4 0, I believe, with three finishes. And they were both really impressive to me, but I had to go with Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler just came. I mean, you, you gotta love Robbie Lawler. The way he fights and how he came into the UFC so young, and now oh, he's back and he's the champion of the UFC. He lost that first fight to Hendricks, but then he came back with a vengeance. He finished Jake Ellenberger, beat Matt Brown, and then he comes away with the victory over Johnny Hendricks in the split decision. Him winning that fight secured it for me. I said it a few weeks ago, if Robbie Lawler wins that fight against Johnny Hendricks, I'm going with Robbie Lawler for my fighter of the year. Even though it was a bit controversial, it was a very close fight. I thought it could have went either way upon rewatching it, and... I got to go with Robbie Lawler. The guy's been so impressive. He's been he's looked like a different fighter since returning to the UFC, and he just capped it off at the end of the year with his title. Yeah. Okay. Well, for my honorable mentions, I got to go. Don't sound overly enthused, Nick. I, only because, yeah, 
Ah, screw it. All right, wait. I picked the same guy. Robbie Lawler, ruthless <laughs> Robbie Lawler, MMA, MMA discussion fight of the year, let's just say it. Because, come on. With as crazy as a year as we've had, there's rarely a time where guys at the top of the game who are up there, ranked, you know, they don't fight a lot. And not well, it's not all of them. Some of them do. Like Luke Rockhold, the top-ranked guy, came in, fought three times this year. Um, certain Cowboy other guys can do it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what do you mean I don't, you don't know what I'm talking I feel like some of these ranked guys... I'm being, don't, I'm being a little sarcastic. Oh, I was about I'm to say, yeah. Cowboy, Cowboy loves to fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying some of them do, not all of them. Obviously, there's like a few exceptions uh, for yeah. each division. Yeah. But uh, like Dennis Bermudez, that's a guy that fights a lot. Uh, Bantamweight, there's a guy like... Um, well, not Brian Caraway, I guess. But Mizugaki, he fought three times this year. Um, but yeah, for some, I mean, some of the guys rank near the top. They don't always fight a lot. You know, sometimes it always becomes a thing where it's you, know, you start looking for the right fight and then trying to get that title shot. Da 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 da. With that, Rob, ruthless Robbie Lawler starts off the year earned the title shot. First of all, he beat Rory McDonald, BJ, uh, uh, Bobby Volker, and Josh Koscheck in his return, uh, going down to welterweight last year. He was the comeback career fighter of the year last year. Um, uh, as far as our MMA discussion Facebook page goes, that's who won it. And then sure enough, comes into the year, fights for the title, barely loses it. And I mean, it's fair to say he lost it fair and square, but he didn't let that hold him down. Not two months later, this guy's back in there putting Jake Ellenberger away, flattening him out on the, on the ground and put and, and getting an immediate win right there. Goes back into the cage against Matt freaking Brown, the immortal one. In one of the, in another contest that could have been fight of the year. Now let's also remember the first fight with Robbie Lawler and Johnny Hendricks was an insane knock 'em sock 'em robots kind of brawling uh, fight where they just you know beat the shit out of each other for five straight rounds. And then he goes in there with Matt the Immortal Brown, does nearly the same thing with this guy who who, who put the hurting on on Robbie as much as Robbie did to him. In another insane fight of the year, and then caps off. The, the year with finally earning the victory and getting the welterweight championship in a career that spans over a dozen years. You know what I mean? Uh, this guy uh, had been working his whole life and didn't didn't allow himself to get slowed down. I mean, let's think three years ago, the guy lost to what? Jake Shields lost to, lost to other guys that, that just didn't even have any names. You know, he, he wasn't he he wasn't competing well, but he was at middleweight as well. You got to remember that, and, and and just something clicked, switched once he got put back into the UFC after uh, the Strike Force merger, and just something happened, and he, and man, he lived up to the potential that he had, that many people said he had about a decade ago, and uh, lived up to it, won the belt. I mean, you can't get any better than that. He's had an insane year when you think about it. Now, as close as that fight is, you can't take that win away from him. And next year, he's got a busy he's got a busy schedule. He's going to be taking on either Hendricks or Rory McDonald or both in whatever order. Who knows? Um, so with that being said, man, Robbie Lawler, you, uh, first of all, uh, UFC fighter of the year. I got to say, MMA discussion fighter of the year. I think we both agree. Man, what a year. Just thinking about it is, oh, it's almost exhausting yeah. thinking about the busy yeah, beat. I agree on that one. Yeah, it's just exhausting thinking about the busy bee that dude has been this year. Four fights with with uh, just a bunch of, you know, savages like Jake Ellenberger and, 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 and Matt Brown, especially Matt yeah, Brown. Yeah, those guys are no joke. And, I mean, he definitely deserves the, the well-earned rest time now that he's going to have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, four fights in a year and two of them were title fights. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and just looking at the 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 savagery of three of those fights, I mean the the Jake the Jake fight wasn't a crazy fight for him, yeah, but, the, but all the other Bobby three did get clipped in that fight. Did he? Man. Yeah, he got clipped in that fight. Jake had him. Jake, he was he was beating Jake pretty solidly, but he got clipped and he was hurt in that fight. Yeah, that's see, it just explains, it just goes to show you more how impressive it is, how <laughs> in, insane this guy is. He's a champ's champ right there. I mean, that's a champion that that ought to be. You know, he's one of the old, olden veterans of the sport. That and he's not old, but the, yeah, he's been no, around for so long, and you know, he's yeah, fought so I many mean, guys. We, got, we have the big one out of the way now, so I mean, that's one of the big ones. We still got a few more to go, but yeah, we're about we're halfway there now. So yeah, I think we're a little bit more than halfway there. What's next? We got women's 
MMA Fighter of the Year. Now I can go first. Now let's be real. I mean, this is a this isn't a hard one, but it is at the same time. You think about it. You got Ronda Rousey, UFC uh, Women's Bantamweight <laughs> Champion. Um, <laughs> um, at the same time, my thought has always been like, hmm, but there's somebody you know who came in here who changed who changed the uh, uh, the guard a little bit, and that's Carlos Sparza for me. Um, while she took a uh, full half of the year training and getting ready for the ultimate fighter that happened this past, uh, this, this, the latter half of this year, uh, she competed against three of the, of the top 16 women of her division. Now that's not easy at all by any margin. And that didn't even earn her the belt. She had to eventually finally get to the, uh, finale and then came out and just wrecked it. Now, I mean, I know those tough fights don't count towards her record um but with that being said i think that fighting four fights in the margin time margin that she did is impressive no matter w how you slice it so with i i say it's a tie i'm gonna go with the tie because i think both of them deserve it both champions deserve it carla esparza earned it in, in the most uh brutal way possible because she had to fight four of the meanest chicks of her division just to get to the belt Ronda Rousey did, however, have an exciting, crazy year. She took on the, uh, an Olympian and Sarah McMahon at UFC 170, put her down with a knee to the body, won her first uh, fight, uh, for her first ever TKO fight, and then went and decided to knock a chick out in 16 seconds in Alexis Davis at UFC 175. Um, so with that being said, I got to go with both the UFC Bantamweight and Strawweight champion in Ronda Rousey and Carlos Barza. It's a draw for me. Chris, what do you got? All right, I thought this was pretty easy. I went with Ronda Rousey. She obviously deserves it. I mean, she fought twice this year. She only fought twice, but the thing about it is she went in there against two of the top women in her division. Everyone thought Sarah McMahon was going to test her. Silver medalist Olympian in wrestling. Did she test her? Not really. She was in there for about a minute, and she got need to deliver, and that was pretty much the end of the fight after just over a minute. And then we had Alexis Davis. Who, oh, maybe she'll test her. She's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Ronda's never beat a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Absolutely destroyed her. Knocked her out. Like, this was <laughs> a little bit different than the liver shot. She knocked her clean out. That was, I think it was the first legitimate knockout inside the UFC's women bantamweight division. And Ronda was, she only won her fights by armbar. And this year, she won both of her fights by knockout. She's just becoming a more well-rounded fighter each and every fight. And I think she really deserve she deserves it because I mean no one else is beating the same high level of opponents and doing it the way she does. I give it up to Carla though as she was one of my runner ups. She did I mean the Ultra Fighter fights don't count, but you gotta you gotta take them into account a little bit. She did have to fight those girls and she won the title. She beat Rose Nama Yunus, who's a really good fighter herself. But my another runner up I had maybe a little bit higher. I mean around the same as Carla, maybe just a little bit below her was um Joanna Yernjaytrick. I didn't think she beat Claudia Gadella, uh, Gadea, whatever. I don't know how to say it correctly. You said it the first time, right, Gadella? Fight. All right, so uh, yeah, I did say it the first time correctly. But she fought four times this year, and she won all four. Even though I didn't think she won her long last fight, she won it in the eyes of the judges. So she was up there as well. But I gotta give it a Ronda. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. For me, MMA discussion fans, both Ronda, uh, I, I think we both feel it's Ronda Rousey. Again, another emphatic year. Both women, both champions, showing improvement. That's the key thing. Is that Carla Esparza, if anybody's ever paid attention to her career, she's always been, of course, this um, tremendous wrestler. Uh, can take girls down, beat them up on the ground, sometimes lay and pray, sometimes just hold them, sometimes submission. In her last fight... Uh, at the beginning of this month against Rose Namajunas, she absolutely showed a, a new... I don't know who's been teaching Frankie Edgar and her this new ground and pound style, but it's working out because she looked more aggressive, more deadly in there than I think I've ever seen Carla Esparza ever. I've never seen anybody get in there and, 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 and look like that in a women's fight, as far, especially her. Uh, and with Ronda, they're improving in, in areas where it's needed. You know, with Carla, if she's going to take her girl down, being good at ground and pound definitely helps. And she's always just kind of mediocre at it. 
uh, while it was just her control and technique and, you know, top game that was always, you know, the most impressive part about it, her ground and pound became something to watch, man. She absolutely destroyed Rose with it. And, uh, of course, her submission game's always been there. So it's just showing that she's improving, Ronda's improving, and that's a, that's not a fun thing to see when you're looking at the champion and you're, you're like, uh, you're a contender in that division. So, man, both women shaking things up for next year. Ronda Rousey already set to fight. At UFC 184, uh, I can't wait. I'm gonna be watching that live. It's gonna be fun. Women's MMA uh, award of the year, uh, award of the year goes to Ronda Rousey. Let's just say it. It's it's the fairest thing to do. We'll move on now. Next to the MMA discussion knockout of the year. Now, who went first? You or me? Just now. I went I first, know. right? It doesn't matter. Go. I think I went first, right? You can go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. I went first. I just remembered. All right. So, you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. So I'll go first. Do I it. went with. I don't know. A lot of people weren't really talking about this one as much, and I was a bit surprised by it. But I had to go with this one. A lot of people were thinking there were a lot. There were a lot of other really good knockouts. There were a lot of head kick knockouts. There uh-huh. were a lot of crazy knockouts. But mine was just a really fun one. It was probably. I, in my opinion, the craziest knockout of the year, even though it didn't have as high stakes as a lot of the other knockouts this year. But mine was Chris Beal's flying knee knockout. <laughs> Williams. That's a good I one. I thought it was awesome. I just uh, – straight out, I thought it was awesome. I Just the way he – that flying knee was ridiculous. Let's just say it. I mean, there were a lot of head kick knockouts. Josh Sammons recent knockout over Eddie Gordon. Don Cerrone's knockout of Adriano Martins, Mark Hunt of Roy Nelson. There were so many awesome knockouts, but I just thought this one was the coolest, and I had to give it up to Chris Beal. Yeah, as far as um, as far as like uh, textbook goes is concerned, that was it. That's the pure definition of it. I mean, <laughs> knee up, hands ready at the wings to allow yourself to fly forward and. Oh, man, he clipped him across the face, and I was just like, oh, my God. His face was broken, I thought. I was, it was bad. Dude, Chris Beal, yeah, I mean, what a way to come into the UFC. It was insane. And, uh, dude. <laughs> dude, bro, I, I can't even. It was insane. It was a good one. I will definitely say that. And it actually kind of will shine into mine. I don't have the same one. It's an honorable mention. Honorable mentions for me, yeah, you said uh, one down at Cerrone versus Adriano Martins, uh, Mark Hunt over Roy Nelson. I actually had one from Bellator. Uh, Joe Schilling's knockout of uh, of Melvin Manhoof was a, another good one. It was an, it was a great combo. It was actually a good yeah. comeback of the year if you think about it. It's a good candidate yeah, for that. Schilling's was losing that fight. Oh, for yeah. sure. Manhoff was manhandling him in the first round, and then the second round comes in, and then boom, you know, Schilling just lands out perfect one-two, and Manhoff is out. Um, there, there were a lot of good knockouts. If anybody's seen the Facebook fan page of MMA Discussion, uh, there were 151 knockouts in the UFC alone this year. So there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> um, the Sweet Chin Music is, is also a definite candidate, possibly. But it wasn't like a definitive knockout. The guy didn't, like, he went down, but he tried getting back up as well. So I think go, you got to go for like clear knockouts. And yeah. mine for as, as – you know – I will say second place is this, um, as because of the difficulty factor. Roy Nelson's knockout of Mark Hunt, that's my second place. I will say this because of how difficult it is to knock out Mark Hunt, first of all. Yeah. You know, let's be real. Roy Nelson is the toughest chin uh, possibly, possibly in, the, in, the, in the entire UFC. Yeah, you can take a hit from anybody. Um, all right. But my winner. Drum roll, here we, please. Drum roll, please. <laughs> this is Nick's pick for knockout here we go. of the year. <laughs> Mine happened at UFC 180, and it won Fabricio Verdum the UFC interim heavyweight championship as it was oh, his flying knee knockout over Mark Hunt that earned him the belt. This year, I mean, first of all, you got to think of every bit of aspect that it had. It was for the title. He was losing that fight. He got dropped in that fight. He wasn't winning a single bit of it at all. <laughs> yeah, and then out of the freaking blue – Hayakiya, a knee straight to the bottom of the dome of Mark Hunt. And Mark Hunt, another one of these insanely hard dudes to put away on the feet. And gets put down, and that, it was it. I mean, it, it wasn't he wasn't defending at all. I think he was completely knocked out. I mean, to eat a shot like that, 
it was it, it was another flying knockout or flying knee knockout like Chris Beals, but it had more stakes to it for me. So I, and it was oh, yeah. just more impressive because you really didn't see that coming at all. I mean, you never know what you'll see in a prelim fight, which is why Beal's knockout even still is impressive in its own. But to see it in a heavyweight freaking title fight is absolutely bananas to me. So for me, my my MMA discussion award for Bracey Overdoom is flying knee knockout over Mark Hunt, which happened in I think in October. Um, one one of my favorite knockouts of the year, definitely. I don't know. What do you think of that one? Yeah, no, I like it. I mean, another flying knee. I mean, I, I went more based off of just what I thought looked the best and was the coolest, but that definitely had really high stakes, and it was a good it was a good knockout. But I, I just went with Beals because I thought it was just it was insane. Cool deal, man. Yeah, I mean, ugh. Just the, the, the <laughs> just thinking about eating one of those is, ugh. Yeah, no. It hurts it's my just, neck. It looks, it's just, looks painful yeah <laughs> it looks I painful i definitely don't want to be on the receiving end of either one of those <laughs> definitely we'll move on to the next award here uh mma discussion submission of the year chris you go first oh wait no you went first last time i'll go first okay so it was came down to there were a few honorable mentions i had uh ben saunders Oma plata i think it was my number two number three would probably be oh you didn't go number one not with that one, no. I mean, it was a good one. It, first of all, let's be real. The Van Saunders Alma Plata was the first ever Alma Plata in the UFC, which is great, and it's a uh, it's a great submission. Uh, my number three was Luke Rockhold's uh, submission over uh, Tim Bosch, the Kimura. It was uh, the the oh, yeah, one. The, that was a great one. Kimura. I mean, um, yeah. the setup was insane. I mean, he, he dominated him every single aspect. Of, of the ground game. He transitioned correctly, landed some good ground pound, was able to set it up because of it, and then found the arm and then just wrenched it from in from such an awkward angle. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it, was had, it was like inverted from triangle. You I don't know, it was weird, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. And then so but my submission of the year, here we go, happened at UFC one eighty one, Anthony Pettis's guillotine submission uh win over Gilbert Melendez. Now I will tell you why I picked this one. This one high uh, stakes, baby. Well, not just the high stake. Uh, well, now I think about it. Yeah, high stakes. It was for the title. High it was factors into it. It was impressive. It was impressive. I mean, man, he sensed that in like it was nothing, and he did it to a guy that never not 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 only been never been submitted, but never been finished before. And he did it to Gilbert Melendez, and Gilbert Melendez being one of the toughest dudes, uh, one of the gritty veterans of our sport. And he put him away, and and and, 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 it, and Gilbert actually in that fight looked like he was doing the right thing. If you think about the fight in general, Gilbert uh, had a good game plan, kind of, but he wasn't being uh, defensive enough. He wasn't getting out of the way of danger enough. And sure enough, uh, Pettis was able to find the opening and just slicked it on. And it's just showing how much how how much more dangerous that guy's becoming. No matter what you say about him, no matter how long he stays out, he seems to be improving. Seems to be getting better. And that's a dangerous thing for a guy like Anthony Pettis. And it was just, for me, one of the most shocking submissions that I'd seen all year. So the shock factor was more of, of it because I really didn't – I mean, I knew he could threaten with submissions. I thought maybe it was a possibility. But even still watching it live, I thought, wow, that's insane. I can't believe he got that done. He got it done. Anthony Pettis, my submission of the year. Chris, what do you have? All right. We mentioned it before. I went Ben Saunders, Oma Plata submission of Chris Heatherly. I, I, another, it, I didn't go stakes on it again. I just went, I mean, yeah, I did have Pettis' submission of Melendez up there. It was definitely my number two. But I didn't go with the stakes. I just thought that was really, really impressive. The first Oma Plata submission in UFC history. And I know how hard it is to pull these off. And it's even that much harder when you're in the UFC doing it. And Ben Saunders just got it done. And it's just it's one of those submissions that you never really see in MMA in general. And it was really cool. I thought again, like the Chris Beal one, the stakes weren't high. It was on the fight pass, but it was just a fun submission. That's why I went with it. Cool deal. There you go. Two flying knees, your knockouts. Or I mean I'm sorry, we're talking about submissions. You got Anthony yeah, Pettis, no, your submission now. and the Oma plot. I mean, both are good choices. The Oma plot was for me, I was shocked when I saw it. I was like when does that ever happen? It's kind of like when... Yeah, from Roman you know, God, pulling that Eddie Bravo stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just, I mean that guy is more of a, a, a... I mean, that's like two years or two out of the last three, he's been a very big influence on submission of the year. 
Um, cause with the twister from Korean zombie yeah. and all that. Yeah. I mean, it's, he, he's, it, it's great to see uh 10th planet jujitsu live and well in the UFC. It's pretty cool. I like it. We're going to move on now. MMA discussion fight of the year. Now this may be tough. <laughs> Uh, I went first, so Chris, I'll allow you to go first. Fight of the year. This one was another, This one was tough for me, man. I mm. was in between two fights. The <gasps> two fights I was stuck on was Robbie Lawler, Johnny Hendricks one, which wound up being my runner-up. There was also a few other ones that were in there, like uh, Weidman, Machida. And th- the fight I ultimately wound up choosing was a recent fight between uh, Jose Aldo and Chad Mendez, their second fight. I just thought it was that was a fantastic fight. There was knockdowns. I thought it was just a bit more. I I thought it was a bit more exciting, a bit more technical than Hendrix Lawler was. Hendrix Lawler, they kind of like just got in, stood in front of each other for a while, and just went at it. It was a back and forth battle, which both fights were. But I thought that this fight was just a bit more on the technical side. I thought there was. I mean, yeah, a lot of people had it just two rounds. I had three rounds to two for Aldo. And that first round, when Aldo hit him at the end of the belt, could have won him that round. And you never know if that didn't happen. Chad Mendes could be the UFC featherweight champion right now. He really brought it to Aldo. And I think a lot of people now, even though Mendes has lost both fights, really want to see that third fight, which is a little bit different than with the with Hendricks Lawler. A lot of people do want to see a third fight just because of the outcome of the last one. But I think these two are just matching up, matched up so well in that second fight. I thought it was really exciting. And, uh, yeah, that's why I went with it for the fight of the year for me. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, I'll tell you my second place was also Hendricks and Lawler. Um, and uh, maybe I'll think I'll say, uh, like, my third place was that fight, Mendes and Aldo, too. Uh, my first place was just the degree of – of freaking out that I was having throughout this fight, and it's actually not as high stakes as you would believe, uh, like my other ones have been this far, but I gotta go with Matt Brown versus Eric Silva as my uh, fight of the year. Uh, that happened at UFC Fight Night Cincinnati, I'm not exactly sure on the number of event that it was, um, but it was a fight night event, it was him versus Eric Silva, now it starts off with Eric Silva landing a body kick that drops Matt Brown cold, and he's just well, not out cold, but he was just out, he was down on the ground, and he he actually said this later. He was like, "I put my head out so that he'd start hitting my head and start instead of hitting my body." That's how hurt his body was. Um, um, he gets up, he got, he gets up, and ends up probably winning the round by putting a putting a punishing beat down in the last minute of it to to Eric Silva, and then just proceeds. They proceed to trade. Matt Brown's winning them generally. He starts landing standing elbows and kicks and. And just, oh, man, Eric, props to Eric Silver for the heart the man has because he took so much damage as well as Matt Brown, uh, just not as much. Uh, and it was a it was a grueling fight that Matt Brown had to come back from. That could also be a comeback of the year candidate, as we said. Um, for, so for me, my fight of the year MMA discussion award goes to Matt Brown and Eric Silva. That's a great fight, I thought. Because yeah, I'm, I was standing the entire time, I couldn't sit down. Even in the new corner, I was like, "Man, if I sit down, I'm just gonna shake." It was yeah, so that was good. awesome. Just for me, at the the first round was insane, and then there was a point where it kind of just Matt Brown took over. That's why it wasn't my fight of the year. It stopped being a back and forth battle. Uh-huh. Yes, well, we'll move on now. We only have a few select few left. Actually, I'm going to go to one that I skipped. I didn't mean to, but let's do it. MMA discussion, most improved fighter of the year for 2014. Uh, I believe it's my turn first. I'll say I think it's kind of obvious at the same time, but let's be real. Uh, TJ Dillashaw, my most improved fighter of the year for 2014. Uh, looking back at last year, first of all, he, last is, he lost his last fight of last year against Rafael Santana. I don't particularly think he lost that fight. No, but um, but judges no, I thought did. He so. won that fight. Yeah, I thought he won it two to one for sure. But uh, Sunset got away with the win. Uh, but he he didn't look anywhere near how he's looked all year in every fight. He comes back in January to fight Mike Easton, and he put on that that insane masterful kind of style. You start you got a glimpse of of the of the style you were going to see him fight with against Hannah Burrell. You saw a glimpse of it where he was putting it where he, where anytime Easton thought he was going to wrestle, he was striking where Easton thought he was going to strike. He, was, he wrestled him. It was, it, he looked the epitome of, of what a mixed martial arts is supposed to look like. 
And he started off the year like that, beating Mark, Mike Easton by decision, and then put on the, 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 the insane performance he did against Burrell, and then sure enough showed the same magic against Joe Soto to close out his year. Um, he has looked better in those three fights in general than any fight he's ever had, and he's already had a good stretch in the UFC thus far, looking great. So I, for me, 2014, most improved, and I don't think he's ever going to win this award again because he looks fantastic. Chris, who do you got? Yeah, there's really not much more for him to improve on. So for me, I kind of went a different route. Dillashaw has definitely improved, but for me, I, I had to go Max Holloway. The guy lost two fights in 2013. He lost two in a row, and he's still a young kid. He's 23 years old, and then he comes out, finishes all four of his fights this year, and he was really impressive. He was under the radar for a lot of people, especially me. You brought up Max Holloway to me as a potential guy for fighter of the year just because of the wins he had. He had four wins all by finish, three by knockout, one by submission. And I didn't realize how impressive he was until recently. He lost to Conor McGregor and Dennis Bermuda as two of the highest ranked guys in the division. And then he comes out, he TKOs Will Chope, submits Andre Feely out of Team Alpha Male, TKOs Clay Collard, and then he knocked out Akira Khorasani. And he wasn't the guy who was knocking people out before this. This is three knockouts just in this year. He has five in his career. So, I mean, that's really impressive. That shows where he's definitely improved his striking. And he got his one submission this year, too. It's his only submission of his career. So, he was, he was a decision guy. That's what he did. He went to decision when he won a majority of the time. Now he's finishing fighters. And I think that really shows vast improvement in his skills. I like it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he was one of my honorable mentions for fighter of the year. Uh, when it comes to guys, like, you know, like, I think if I were to say featherweight fighter of the year, he'd be on there. I think, you know, debatably, Conor McGregor would be up there as well. And because of the fact that Conor beat him, I think maybe it'd be hard to to debate that. But um, at the same time, man, yeah, you're right. He's looked insane. He's looked great. He's had a great year. He got paid because <laughs> he won, a, a, I think, two bonuses out of out of all of those performance and, and uh, I think knockout of the night, I believe. Um, so he, he uh, man, has had a great year. Max Holloway, great choice. I like it. I'm good with it. Max Holloway and TJ oh, Dillashaw. I'm glad you're pleased. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, your MMA discussion awards go to those two. Uh, great, great fights that those t- the two men have put on this year. We only have a few left. Um, let's do it to these ones right here. MMA discussion story of the year. Now, Chris, please enlighten me on what your award for this one goes to. Oh, this is another tough one. This is really hard for me. I ha- I can't even – I'm still deciding right now as I'm speaking. I'm kind of just holding off because I still haven't really decided. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right, here are my three that are up for discussion for me. I think I'm going to go – I think, think I know which one I'm going to go with. But one, it's still yet to be told because we haven't read. The full story hasn't um, enveloped, I guess you could say. Uh, the Reebok deal with the UFC, that's a really, that was a really big story it's towards the end of this year. But Reebok and the UFC having his partnership, that's going to be more told in 2015, see how it affects fighters a little bit more. We're going to know a little bit more about it. So it's still a story that hasn't fully been told. As for the other two, one is just a person. It's Conor McGregor. Just his. <laughs> it's just Conor McGregor. He uh, is my. I guess he would be my runner-up for this one. He's your Irish Conor crush. McGregor is just. He's <laughs> just shot into the scene. The guy had an ACL surgery. He, he shot into the scene in 2013, but this year was really the year of Conor McGregor. The guy just came up. He beat Dustin Poirier by knockout. He beat Diego Brando by knockout. Sold out Ireland. He main evented. Everyone knows who Conor McGregor is. If you know anything about the UFC, you know who this guy is. And, I mean, they're, they're, we haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Where, I mean, he just talks, talks a talk, and he walks a walk. That's what he does. And he's only one win away from a UFC title fight, most likely. If he beats Dennis Seaver, he'll be in the title contention. And I think, yeah, I mean, he has to be the runner-up for me. It's not just because of his accomplishment, just how he talks, what he does. He's just something new for the sport. When you, when I write for MMANuts.com, when we write a story about Conor McGregor, it gets a ridiculous amount of traffic. Any story you write about the guy gets a ridiculous amount of traffic. You know why? Because he's huge. He's huge. Everyone knows about him. Everyone wants to hear what he's saying. Everyone wants to hear about the guy. 
And I think his journey in the UFC this year, I he just exploded as a star in the sport. And I think that's a really big story. It's one of the biggest of the year. In my opinion, it's probably the second biggest of the year. But for me, the biggest story oh my was God. C- CM Punk signing. Ah! It was CM Punk signing with the UFC. <laughs> no one expected this, really. Like, there was rumors out there, but no one expected him to sign with the UFC. He's a former WWE champion. He doesn't really have fight experience. No one knew the extent of his jiu-jitsu training at the Gracie Academy with Henry Gracie. No, he doesn't really have much striking experience at all. And he's signed by the UFC. He's one of the most popular WWE athletes maybe of all time. And the guy just gets signed by the UFC. He's not even a belt in jiu-jitsu. Dude, he, just, he says he doesn't visit the gym frequently enough to, be, to have a blue belt. So, I mean, he's kind of like, his jiu-jitsu, I'm not saying it's on the level of mine, but I've been training for about a year, and I've been pretty consistent. Him saying he's been going on and off for a few years, he's probably a hell of a lot better than me, I'm not going to lie. But, that's, I mean, he has the fight experience of me, and he's in the UFC. That's kind of ridiculous to me. I <laughs> that kind of pisses me off, to be honest with you. <laughs> for a guy, for me, it's, it's anybody funny. knows me, they know I've had four fights. And, uh <laughs> That's sad. He has sad. no professional fights. He has no amateur fights. And he's in the UFC. And I think everyone just went nuts when they heard this. People are still talking about it, debating it. And this was this had to be the biggest story of 2014, in my opinion. Because it was so crazy. It was just outlandish that no, like, no one thought... Yeah, I mean, people thought CM Punk might fight in MMA. But being signed by the UFC, this is crazy. Like, when Brock Lesnar got signed by the UFC, he was a Division One national champion wrestler he's a huge guy he's 290 something pounds and he cuts down to 265 pounds he's built like a square <laughs> Brock, Brock is just built like a square he's like a he's super built human. like he a square to... he really is I mean his upper body's like a huge uh, square his head's he, square he's built he's like nice. the top part of him is what a centaur should look like you know what I mean? yeah I know it's really <laughs> yeah. it was, I mean CM Punk signing with the UFC just insane I thought, I mean, it might not be the best, just uh, specifically MMA related story like Reebok, like McGregor, like a few other things this year. But I mean, it's just, it's just out there. And I had to pick that as my story of the year for 2014. Mine is a very much more political, I will say. Um, I'll also say this about Conor McGregor. I actually, you know, where I work, there's an Irish guy that works there and he doesn't watch MMA, but he's heard of Conor McGregor. He's, you know, he frequents to and from family in Ireland and stuff, and he's heard about him to an insane degree. Yeah, he's yeah. like, that's our new, he, the best quote that you can think about, about Conor McGregor was this. When I heard it from this Irish guy, he told me, that's like our new man in Pacquiao right there. I was thinking like, whoa, really? Like the fact that somebody that doesn't even watch him and maybe say that about him is insane. Um, but that just shows how wild he is over there. And how, how much his popularity has just spread for anybody to be saying, you know, for one country to be backing one fighter, an MMA fighter especially, is, is incredible. Now, for me... Um, yeah, he's really transcended the sport. I mean, that's a whole country. That's no joke. And this is the UFC. We've never had... We've had some fighters like that, but this is like... Ireland's behind Conor McGregor. That's why I thought that was such a huge story. Yeah, they're behind like one himself. man. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Exactly. It's crazy. Now, mine being, as, like, all of yours were good, especially mine being political as it was. It, at first, it was going to be that Keith Kaiser was no longer the, the the president of the national, or the national, the Nevada State Athletic Commission. That was a huge one. But uh, it, it, the story never built any kind of good traction. And for, and for me, the reason w- uh, why this next one is important is because of the fact that Keith was removed, that this, that this new policy was allowed, the removal of testosterone replacement therapy from uh, MMA in general, not just the UFC. Uh, and, and the national uh, – why do I keep saying that? Nevada State Athletic Commission <laughs> uh, banned TRT, I believe, in uh, May – and when that happened, it, it just immediately became a huge thing. Oh, my God. Okay. It's not legal anymore. You can't use it. Dan Henderson, Vitor Belfort, uh, uh, certain other fighters like Ben Rothwell, they couldn't use it anymore. 
uh, you know, Bigfoot Silva. I mean, uh, you know, big names. They couldn't use it anymore. It was not. It's not allowed. It's gone. It's been gone. It's been gone the second half of this year now, and and it's like I, I feel like people have forgotten about it. But when it happened, it was huge because it was finally, you know, and and since then I haven't heard a, a single other than people making fun of Vitor still. But since then, I, I don't hear about people, you know, okay, oh, well, he's on TRT. So I mean, people don't use that excuse for fighters anymore. They can't. Uh, the fighters can't use it. Fans can't bitch about it when a fighter loses and stuff, and or used it before. Uh, it's it's just been one of those big things that I feel like was great for the sport. It needed to happen, and it's happened. And uh, and it's never going to be a thing that we need to even deal with anymore. Um, it, it even impacted the career of Chael Sonnen. It eventually yeah. led to his retirement. Yeah. If you think about it, because without it, he needed to use different types of medicine. He did. It got him banned for for two years. Uh, he got in that whole you know big botch of trouble in the summer, and so it, it led to a lot of other stories uh, actually. So I mean, yeah. for me, it's the testosterone replacement therapy wins the award for event or story of the year. Two very good yeah, ones, was- I will say. Yeah, that was a really big story this year. I agree. It definitely, uh, it definitely benefits the MMA in general for that TRT is no longer allowed. Because, I mean, now there's no excuses. There's, and, like, we still haven't really seen how it, it has impacted the sport fully. Because we've seen a lot of guys coming off it. But the main the main suspect of it has always been Vitor Belfort. We've been, and he's fighting. He still hasn't fought off TRT. And a lot of people are just waiting because we've seen guys who are on TRT fight off of it recently, but no one's really been, no one's been like an advocate of it, like Vitor Belf or was maybe outside of Chael Sonnen. And we have, we never saw Chael fight off it, and now we're just waiting on Vitor. We saw Dan Henderson fight off it, but that was he bad. Wasn't as, like, that was pretty bad. He, <laughs> yeah, we, he hasn't been like the biggest proponent of it as Vitor and Chael were. And we're still waiting on to see how Vitor looks. He does, I will say, he does look a lot smaller. Looks like he could fight at 170, in my opinion, oh, yeah. as we've seen him recently. But who knows? Maybe, it, maybe it wasn't the TRT juice that got Vitor all worked up. We'll see when he fights Chris Weidman how that goes. We will see, and that's a discussion for another day. We have one more. Un mas, Chris. Here we go. The MMA moment of the year. Chris, you may go first. Oh, I get to go first again. I feel special. Do it, dude. All right. So finish strong. I- I mean, I thought this was a pretty easy one, for me at least. I didn't go to fight. I went with something outside of a fight because this, in my opinion, was the biggest moment in MMA of 2014. I'll finish strong. Oh, my God. John Jones, Daniel Cormier. Ah! The brawl. The brawl between John Jones and Daniel Cormier. That was a fight, technically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we get technical, it was a fight. But I just thought this was a huge moment because, I mean, it's impacted so much. I mean, a lot of people are, like, when that happened, so many people were so much more excited for the fight between Jones and Cormier, and then Jones pulls out with an injury, and they're still using it, and that built up so much more. Like, it wasn't just the brawl itself. The brawl led to all all these interviews about the brawl. What they've used for the promo has mostly been interviews after the brawl took place between Cormier and Jones from that off-air interview when... Jones says he was going to kill Daniel Cormier, and I mean, and he, he was talking so much trash, and then he comes on the air. It's really brought out a lot of what John Jones is, what seems like his real personality is, and Daniel Cormier has brought it out of him, and I think the, that fight that took place between them, really outside of the fight, has made this much more interesting, a fight between the two, because it's shown the personalities of both. And I think it's just made it such a more heated rivalry. And this is one of, if not, this is one of the best fights, in my opinion, like from a technical aspect, from a skill point, uh, from a skill set. I think these two are two of the best guys in MMA. And this is like to what the, the best of what MMA has to offer at the time. It's going right down now. in less than two Cormier. weeks, dude. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really can't wait for that fight. John Jones... Is in my in my eyes in the eyes of most is undefeated. He was disqualified oh, against Matt yeah. Hamill, but but he's undefeated. He's never been beaten. He's no one's ever beat him, and no one's ever beat Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier has been he was an Olympian. He was a captain of the U.S. men's wrestling Olympic team. Oh, shit, he's son. undefeated. 
in his MMA career. I mean, and the guy's just dominated. He's never lost a round. He's never lost a single round in MMA. He's dominated guys at heavyweight. He's knocked out guys at heavyweight. He's dominated guys at light heavyweight, including Dan Henderson. I mean, this is just going to be an amazing fight. And that brawl really just brought so much more attention to it, made it so much more fun. It brought out so much, many more things, and that's why it gets a moment of the year for me. And that's where I'm going to end that. That's an incredible pick, I will say. Um, definitely didn't see that coming. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it does bring a lot to that fight. It will be um, intriguing to say the least to watch. For me, mine, and once again, we will be bringing on the Bantamweight champ into the discussion. As far as moment, it wasn't a fight uh, for me. Because when I'm sitting there, I was watching it. I couldn't believe what I was watching. TJ Dillashaw's five-round uh, performance against Hennon Burrell. Now, I... <laughs> I remember sitting there. I was watching it. I was at a Hooters. It was awesome. I could, I was, I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking like, is this really happening right now? Like I'm whispering it to myself. Like I like I needed to like like I couldn't believe it even with even though I was seeing it with my own eyes. First of all, he dropped Hennon in the first round, and then after that, I needed to like rebound off the shock. Um, and I'm sitting there watching him, his footwork, his hand speed, his hand, his head movement. He was getting out of the way of all the shots. He was beating him to the punch. He was moving away from him with his feet. He was able to, he was able to, um, you know, utilize the ground whenever he could. He was able to put him down and then took it to the ground and then beat him up there. Um, it was just, it was, it was for me in the modern era. It's one of the most impressive uh, performances by any MMA fighter that I have seen in like. In, in 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 the UFC, I guess I could say in 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 ever almost. It was incredible. It was one of those performances that you just don't see every year or every other five years. It takes a special individual to go in there and just have everything riding on all motors and servers and at a hundred percent optimum efficiency. He went in there basically looking like a perfect human being that knows everything and he knew something we didn't because he went in there with the confidence that I just was surprised to see from him. And man, it, everything kind of just fell in place for him that night. And not only did he beat him for five straight rounds, he finished him in the end of the fight uh, with a head kick, uh, put him down with the punches following after and, you know, heaven or heaven, Hennen Barrow, um, uh, took you know took the best that he could but couldn't last and it was just the greatest if there was a performance of the year that we could have had that would have won it easy for me um but for me for for now i guess we'll give it to moment for me my moment of the year tj dillashaw's his amazing performance against Tanner morale that's how i'm gonna finish this off dude it was yeah, i like it that's a good one too fan fans it's been an insane year it's I I it's think we crazy. did a fantastic job with this podcast. I'll give us a lot of credit here. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I think. I mean, this year has been insane. It's been great. It's been it's been a lot of things. It's been exhausting at the same time. You think of how many events we've all had to watch. You know, if you're for any of our hardcore fans listening, um, you know, so much to watch. There's not going to be I as think many those next are the year. The only fans listening, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you know, with, with, with everything that's gone on this year, it's been insane. It's been a great year though. I, I think at the end of the day, there were more finishes than decisions, which I like. I always like when there's that, that, that just shows you how good the year has been. It just shows you also how many fights there's been. There's been twice as many fights as last year. Um, we've, we've had a great year and the, and, and 2015 looks even more promising than this year did starting off. If you think about it, I mean, um. I think the most yeah, exciting fight fans. going. I think the most exciting fight going into this year was Dominic Cruz and Henan Burrell, and I believe Vitor Belfort and Chris Weidman, and it never even happened this year, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Neither did the other fight, which is kind of sad. Um, so hopefully, you know, everything falls into place for next year. Twenty fifteen is ridden with injuries. I think it may have jinxed it. So I'll stop talking. <laughs> with no. it, with everything no, being said, yeah, I know. With everything being said, John Jones and Daniel Cormier don't, you know. Knock on wood. Stay healthy, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I just no, jinx it. stay Stop. healthy. Everybody Stop stay healthy. Talking. All right. <laughs> Stop. Fight fans, I'm gonna leave it at that before you know lightning strikes. 
Chris, say goodbye. This has been an awesome podcast. Those are your year-end awards. Next time uh, on the podcast, we are going to talk about the re-signing of Quentin Rampage Jackson. We'll talk about the events coming up as well and uh, the, the events that have happened this year. It's gone for a whole week, but we're coming. We're back, and we're going to bring a lot more back. Plays, uh, again. Yeah, we came back real strong today. Yeah, and then uh, so fight fans, please visit us at sportsmanarchy.com. We're going to have more articles coming up in the new year. We have the holidays coming up as, as well, so with that, we wish you uh, 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 happy holidays, all that, the whole shebang. We hope everybody stays safe. Uh, please, uh, if you guys want to listen to us on the go, uh, we're available on the Stitcher app, which is available for any smartphone, so you guys can listen to us uh, on your mobile. Uh, you can also subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, please give us a, a subscribe, a like, a comment, uh, a rating if you'd like. Uh, we appreciate any and all of that, as well as, of course, visit us on uh, Twitter if you ever want to talk to us. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Nick the Phantom. Chris's is go ahead and say yours, dude. Um, yeah, you can find me at Chris Paluka or at Sports of Anarchy. Make sure to visit the site as well if you want to hit me up anywhere there. We're also looking for some writers for the site, so if you have any experience or not, if you just want to try to get into it, feel free to contact me through my either my personal Twitter or through my the Sports of Anarchy Twitter. I'll get back to you and. I'll let you know how everything shakes out. And have a happy holidays, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, guys. One more thing. Also, please get on Facebook. Spread the word. <laughs> MMA discussion. Thank you, fans. We appreciate you. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. If you don't hear from us until then. But we will be back before then. So <laughs> make sure you listen. Appreciate you guys. Happy holidays, guys.